Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to my updated rare plant wish list. Now I know I did do a wish list sometime in, I think it was late January, and I think I've gotten, I don't even know how many plants I've gotten from that list, but I think more the point is, since I've done that wish list, I would argue honestly that quite a few things have changed. I think my taste in plants has definitely changed from what it was back then when I was making that wish list. So I thought I would do an updated one. When I started this channel, I did actually start this channel with a complete and utter love of Calathea. Now I still love Calathea, but it would not be right Right to say that I don't love other plants now a lot more. I do still own Calathea, they just they don't really ever get a spotlight, so to speak, so I don't really talk about them. I do still love them, but I guess I'm kind of moving out of them a little bit. I do think this is a good thing rather than a bad thing though, because I do think it's more than, you know, fine to try different things and see what you like. So that said, obviously I have become, you know, I would say a lover or even a collector. I would go as far to say as a collector because it's getting that way of rare aroids. Now I do have a wish list. It's, it's, it's good. Most of this wish list does feature aroids. However, there are a few surprises in there that one or two of you might not actually expect. I don't know. I want to see what happens with this. I do have my trusty tablet. Uh, it's plugged in because I forgot to charge it. So there you go, you know, professional. Now, the thing with these plants is I've picked them, a lot of them based on sight. So I don't necessarily know, you know, everything there is to know about the plant. I may have literally just seen it on Pinterest and gone, I like that, I'll have that. So I'm sorry if I can't give you any information about the plants. That's not the kind of video it is. I haven't really done any digging. This is purely based on aesthetics and something I would like to own. I haven't even double checked if I can own all of them. Some of them are so rare I will never own them. You, you'll see what I mean as we go down. Okay, let's start. So I've grouped these into categories because I didn't want to group them in order of rarity. It's not that kind of thing. It doesn't matter whether they're rare or not. They just happen to be quite rare, I guess. Maybe some of them aren't actually. So I'm going to start with my fern category. The first fern that I would really like to own, I cannot pronounce this, let me try. Selaginella. <laughs> Selaginella wildenauii. Let's just call it a blue peacock fern because that's what I've been calling it. I put the name down, we ain't going there, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So as you may be able to tell from the image, it is a fern, but this one is blue. It's, it's blue! Like, Blue is one of my favorite colors, if not my most favorite color, I think. Um, love green, love blue. Anything on the cold spectrum, like teal, I love that color. But this looks absolutely amazing. Now, I have checked other images on Google, and it does appear that the fern is generally blue, and it's not just a case of, oh, you know, this has been really photoshopped. But I don't know anything about it. I have heard you can grow this one aquatically, i.e. underwater. I don't know. If I had this fern, I might actually give that a go, because I've never done that before. I don't actually think I'm going to find this fern. I've seen it on the internet, but not necessarily too buy. I've just seen websites kind of talking about it and, you know, order it, which is never good if a website just says you, you can order this, email us. That's never a good sign. But I do think this could actually be quite fun. It's just, it's based on the blue. I'm not going to lie. It's because it's blue. There is, there is no, you know, amazing thing that this plant does or anything like that. It's because it's blue. Just gonna, just gonna put that out there. Next one. I'm going to try and pronounce this as well. This is the Alsplenium nidus variegated. <laughs> You can totally tell I just haven't looked any of these up. Okay, this is basically a variegated fern. Nidus fern? A variegated one of those ferns. I quite like this, and the image I'm looking at, it's basically, it looks like it's not even real. It's like, literally, the variegation on this particular one I'm looking at anyway, is like half white and half green, and I just think that's brilliant. I mean, that's probably very difficult to look after, I can only imagine. I, I haven't seen it kicking about anywhere, but then again, I also haven't looked, as I say. Okay, the next category, that was it for ferns, there's only two ferns. The next category may surprise you a little bit. There is only one plant in this category, but I have a horrible feeling that my love for this plant may grow upon buying the first one, if that makes sense. And the category is Hoya. I know, I know. Did you, would you ever peg me for a Hoya person? No, probably not. But I would actually like to try one. And the Hoya that I have picked out to try is the Hoya Polyneura, which is basically a fishtail Hoya. And as the name suggests, oh, these leaves genuinely look fantastic. The pattern on the leaves, is it a pattern? 
Yeah, I think it's, I don't know if it's the veining or it's a pattern on the leaves, but basically, obviously it looks like loads of fishtails. I know this is a really simplistic Hoya, probably out of all of the Hoya that you could probably own, but I've, I've been looking at a lot of images of Hoya and other than the, I think it's the Carnosa tricolor, other than that one, I haven't necessarily seen a ton of Hoya that I would like to try. So I would really like to try this one. And I don't actually hear of anybody talking about this. This could be a super common Hoya. I don't know. I've never really heard anybody you know, talk about owning it. I don't see pictures of it. I don't know. I literally, I have no idea where to get it, how rare it is or anything, but I do know that I really like it. Hopefully, hopefully, if I ever pick that up, that won't spiral out of control because I tend to get out of control. You know. Next category of plants I'm looking for, this will not surprise you at all, but this is the philodendron category and I've written that I have nine plants, I may have added more, I'm not sure, there's a few plants on this one and a lot of these really aren't going to surprise anybody to be honest. The first on the list, the philodendron, is the philodendron varicosum. Oh my god, have you ever seen anything as good as this? The image I'm looking at now just looks amazing. And I can't even see the front of the leaf. It's like, it has wonderful frizzy stems. It has beautiful red backing. It has loads of veins. It's a big heart shape. And it's velvet! Like, where are you? I need you in my life! I think these are kind of coming, you know, on the internet here and there, but I never seem to catch them when they're on the internet. It really irritates me. I can never find one, but I'm still holding out. This is probably one of the top philodendron I'm actually looking for at the minute. I cannot wait for the day that I eventually get it though. That is going to be an awesome, awesome day. Next on my list of philodendron that I would really love to own, again, no surprise to anybody, is the philodendron melanochrysum. I actually own a hybrid of melanochrysum crossed with varicosum, but that doesn't stop me wanting the varicosum and the melanochrysum. I know you might have thought that that might have placated me somehow. No, I'm sorry. No, I still need the other two. It completes the set. I need it in my life. I do think when this melanochrysum is juvenile, from what I've seen, the leaves are much, much shorter in length. The image I'm showing you probably right now of a one with much longer leaves, that happens when the plant reaches like quite a, you know, quite a level of maturity. So I'm assuming whenever I get one, it's not actually going to be this big and it's not even really going to look like that. It's probably going to look a lot more juvenile. Not insanely rare, I don't think, but really hard to get a hold of because I just think they're so sought after. Next on my wish list, we have the Philodendron Gloriosum. Oh, again, big hearts, beautiful veining, velvety Philodendron. Done. Done. I think this philodendron is actually a philodendron that a lot of people seem to want when it comes to, you know, your big heart-shaped, more luxurious philodendrons. This one does seem to be on the top of most people's lists for that. To be honest, I've found most of the plants on this list in general from rare plant indexes, but that's probably no surprise to anybody. And to be honest, like, rare plant indexes, I'll say it now, they are just terrible for everybody's wish list. Like, please do not think that you guys watching at home right now are immune from any of this, because this list that I'm making completely and utterly proves like, they're just dangerous. Like, don't watch them. Don't watch them. <laughs> don't watch my videos, guys. Just don't. It's not good for anybody. Next up on the list is the Philodendron Plowmanii. I don't know how to say that. Plowmanii, Plowmanii, I don't know. But here it is. It's beautiful. It's glossy. It's not velvety like a lot of the other big philodendron. And it has a lot of dimension in the leaves. I keep using the same image because I love it so much. It just, it's got so much like shading and I guess dimension is the, the word that I want. I just love it. I don't think this is too difficult to get a hold of. I think I can source this. I'm just not in any rush because I'm, I have a lot of plants at the minute and I'm still working out how to get around that. So I am on the hunt for this. Don't know when I'll find it. Who knows? Now the next one has only been added to my wish list recently and I could replace it with something else that would you know, possibly fit the bill here. And that is the Philodendron Mycans or Mycans. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's basically a, it's kind of like the Philodendron Scandens, which you probably can't see it. It's right there just above my fingertip. It's basically like a velvet version of that. And very recently I just sold my Philodendron Brazil and I would like to replace it with something. So I do kind of want something to mirror my Scandens there. So maybe this, maybe a different kind of trailing philodendron, I'm not sure, but it's kind of, I want to buy this specifically to replace that. So if you know anything similar to this, i.e. you know, trailing hearts, then please just write something in the comments if you've got any recommendations on what might look nice. Um, but yeah, it's basically, it's to go in the other room, which you guys may have seen on my houseplant tour, and it is to mirror the green Scandens that is back there because it doesn't live there. 
Next on the list is something that I'm I'm not expecting to find it. It's more of like a mythical addition to my wish list, but it's beautiful and I'm really taken by it. So I'm going to include it, and that is the Philodendron Patriciae. I can't even say it. Patriciae, not Patriciae. Patriciae. Really long leaves, really beautiful, bright, like main vein running down them, and it's just like it's just rutched. It's it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I've never seen these sold. I'm just going to go out there and say it. I've never seen them sold, with the exception of NSE, obviously. I just I haven't seen any of this stuff sold, so not expecting to find that. The next philodendron I have on my list is, like, I actually want this a lot more than a lot of the other philodendron, just because it completes the set, and I am really, really in love with this style of philodendron, should we call it? And that is, if anyone remembers the rare plant index I did on philodendron, if any of you remember the philodendron magic mask, that is what is on my wish list. It is basically, it, you know, it's like one of these, and I mean, how well you can see it, hopefully it's not blurring out too much. It's basically like one of these, only it's variegated. It does seem to be different to the Florida Beauty. I keep going back and forth wondering if it's the same or if it's different. I think it is different. I don't think it's a made up plant, because sometimes people do that. They'll say, oh no, it's not this philodendron, it's this other thing. And it's like, no, you made that up. Stop it. But yeah, I'm growing out my Florida Beauty in a minute. It's starting to grow really well in spring, so I would like an established one of those. I have an established one of these, and I want really bad an established magic mask. I have not ever heard people talk about having these. I don't know where to get them. I will find one. Like, believe me, if it takes me a year, I will find one. I really, really like them. Next on my list, because I am a sucker for white variegation, and this gives you like beautiful levels of variegation, this is the Philodendron White Wizard. Not the same as the Philodendron White Knight. The Philodendron White Knight, the best way I can tell the difference personally, even though they look pretty much the same, is the White Knight will have like a pinky stem, similar to a pink princess, and the White Wizard will have a green stem. And for some reason, I just prefer the Wizard. I don't know why. I don't know, there's just something nice about the green and the white. So. I would prefer it over the White Knight. I don't know if they're more expensive or cheaper than White Knights. I feel like the White Knight might be a little bit sought after because it adds like the pink on the stem adds like another color to it, but I actually don't know. So the last plant on my philodendron list is not something I'm expecting to get. It is one of these just mythical things that you put on your wish list and you know you can dream. And that is basically the philodendron spiritus sancti. If you have seen my rare plant index, then you may be aware that this was in the holy category of philodendron this was like the top like top end philodendron this is the most you know well literally holy grail philodendron that's how i came up with the category of holy in the uh, rare plant indexes i have a passion for rare plants and that is because i just have a need to preserve them and cultivate them i can't really explain why that is it's just it's not something that's getting better it's getting worse so if anybody wonders why I like rare plants, that's a large part of that is why. And because there are not a lot of Spiritus Sancti in the world, I don't think, I would love the opportunity to try and grow it and just do my bit, do my best, because I put a lot of work into my general plant care and I would just love to add this and take care of it. I am not expecting to find this. I will be very clear about that. There is just, I'm not going to find it, you know, but I, it's on the list. I can dream. So our next category on the list is Monstera, and this will probably come as absolutely just zero surprise to anybody because I'm kind of obsessed with Philodendron and I'm kind of obsessed with Monstera. So number one out of apparently six is what I have written down here, and that is the Monstera Siltipicana. This, I keep saying this, I love this. The dimension and the shading, I'm going to call it shading, but you know, the different tones in the leaves, the shape of them, the way the plant trails, like I love everything about it. I want it to trail off a chest of drawers or a shelf. I don't have many hanging plants. I don't know if anybody knows this. I think I have like, do I just have two now? I have the Anthurium vitarifolium and I have the heart leaf there. And I actually think that's it. I don't have any other hanging plants. So I would love to add this to my collection. It's just gorgeous. I haven't seen it sold. Then again, I haven't necessarily looked, but let me know if you know anywhere that's selling this because I love it. Okay, so the next Monstera on my list is none other than the Monstera Albo Borzigiana. So basically the white variegated Monstera. Now I've actually been looking for this plant for the past year. My problem is I know you can get cuttings on the internet and it, it wouldn't be really that hard for me to find a cutting. However, I don't want a cutting. 
I would like to find a fully fledged plant. And I know they exist because I've seen them. So I really, really want to just go the whole, the, you know, the whole way and I want to get a fully established plant. I do not want a cutting. I don't know why I don't want a cutting. Maybe because I know how slow they grow. <laughs> because my Thai, obviously I bought my Thai constellation as a baby and I'm just sort of staring it down in the corner every day, hoping it grows. So I think I just need to see some splits in my life. I want more than a cutting. I would like a full plant of this. Will I find one of these? I'd like to say yes, I will. But my gosh, they are hard to get a hold of. I don't think they're super rare. I just think everyone wants them. And whenever they're in a shop or online or wherever, people just buy them. So I will find one. Similarly on my list, the next one, Sarah, I would like is the Alba Borzigiana, which is the yellow version. Now this, I will take a cutting because I know I'm not going to find a full plant. I've never seen a full plant of these. I've never even seen these online. These seem to be really hard to find. I don't know why that is. Maybe people just aren't passing them around because they're just not as sought after as the um, the Albo uh, Borzigiana. I don't really know. I'm such a plant snob. If I have the Thai constellation, if I have the Albo Borzigiana, I have to get the yellow one. I have to. I have to. That is going to be a nightmare to find, I just know already. Next up on my Monstera list, I am not expecting to find this. It's not happening. I'm not going to find it. This is the variegated Atmosonii. This seems to be such a sought after plant. It's not even funny. Like I saw a listing for this a while ago, I think on NSE, I think it was last year. They sold one of these, like a little tiny, you know, like five leaves for like a thousand dollars. I'm not finding this. I know. You know, <laughs> don't come for me. I know I'm not finding it, but it just has to go on the wish list because we all have aspirations, right? But it's gorgeous. Every picture I see looks just stunning. So it's obviously on my wish list. Oh, this one touches my heart slightly. The next plant on my list that I would just die to have is the Monstera Epipremnoides. If you do not already know, I had this plant on loan for around about three weeks, I think, to film a, well, basically the last two videos I filmed. Um, and I, f I really fell in love with it. I don't know what it was. I just want one. I can't explain it. Like maybe because I don't really have anything with holes in at the minute. Like I have Dubai, I have a Thai constellation that doesn't have any holes. It's very young. I don't have anything with holes in it. I don't know what it is about this plant, but I fell in love with it and I was really, really sad to give it back. I do think this one may be obtainable just based on the fact that, you know, I had one on loan. I'm sure they can be sourced. So I'm on the hunt for this one. It's like pretty strong, like, oh. You might think this is, you know, quite easy to get, and it's really not because a lot of people just sell really mature um, Adansonii as this plant. So be careful of that if you're wanting to buy one of these. Really do your homework. Try and get it verified, anything, because a lot of Adansonii can masquerade as this plant because when this plant grows, it changes, like, considerably. So if you're wanting one of these, please be aware of that. Do your research. I wouldn't want anybody to get ripped off on that. And the last plant on my Monstera wish list. This, this isn't a surprise, is it really? It's not. After having this plant in my house also for three weeks and doing research on it to the level that I did the research because my gosh, that took like a week of my life. Like the respect I have for this plant is just beyond healthy, right? This of course is the same scenario as the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti in the way that I'm just not gonna have one of these. I'm not, but by gosh, I want one. I would just love to have this plant. I just want to just protect it and love it and hopefully grow it. I like the challenge of growing it. I realize it would take a lot, like no one knows that more than me, right? But I, I really want to try. So the Monstera Oblique is, that's my own, I think that's my own personal holy grail above any plant that I ever want to own. The Oblique sits like right at the top, right at the top. Moving on to another different category of plant. And this one might surprise you as well. My next category is begonia. I know. Now, I think the shift towards begonia is more likely for me than hoya. Totally get that. But there are only two plants on this, you know, mini list that I have. But I, mm, I like them. I think they are rare. I have not chosen any of these plants, by the way, for their rarity. I just seem to be attracted to it. Like, I can't help it. I can't help it. It's almost like I can smell how rare they are. But that said, the first begonia on my list of two is the begonia pavonina. Pavonina? Pavonina. Pavonina. This one, I mean, it's blue. 
It's blue. I have a thing for blue. It's quite clear. I've seen a lot of images of this where the plant actually looks very velvety and it like, it shifts color in the light. Like it's still blue, but it shifts like a different shade of blue. It's just, oh, you need to look it up. It's gorgeous if you're into begonia and you maybe didn't know about this. Look this up, acquire it, get it on there. It's gorgeous. I'm definitely, definitely looking for this. 100%. It's beautiful. This next begonia on my list is kind of the opposite of what the previous begonia kind of does for me. I'll explain what I mean by that if I can. So the previous begonia does things for me in the way that it's very, very beautiful. And this next plant is also very, very beautiful, but it's just like, it's a bit like, ooh, like, damn, what is that? It, it looks poisonous. Just gonna put it out there, it looks poisonous. This is the Begonia Amphioxus. I think that's how you say it. Honestly, I've never seen anything like this. This looks like you just shouldn't be anywhere near it, and I love that. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I do. I just love the idea of that. It just looks so poisonous. I appreciate this Begonia really isn't for everyone, but I wanna go of that. I really want to go over that. Moving on now to Anthurium, and there are five Anthurium on this list, which is okay. Actually, that's okay. And the first Anthurium on my list is the Anthurium regal or regale. I don't know. Uh, this, to me, represents what an Anthurium should be. Big, strong shape, lovely veins. Velvety is optional, but you know, they tend to be. It's just lovely. It's just a nice, nice Anthurium. I did feature this again in a Rare Plant Index. It's beautiful. I'm looking for it. I think it's quite rare not expecting to find that you know anytime soon without a bit of digging the next plant on my wish list i have mentioned before on the rare plant index that i did when i got to the end of it which is the queen anthurium dark form so i have the regular form if nobody knows this already i have the regular queen anthurium but the dark form looks amazing and i need it because it completes a set it's light and dark, it's gorgeous. I could do a really beautiful display with both of them together. I need that in my life. It's beautiful. Again, I wasn't even expecting to get the Anthurium, the, the normal version that I have. So I'm certainly not expecting to get this one. So make, make no mistake on that. This isn't something that I'm just expecting to pick up, but it's so pretty. I didn't even know there was a dark form until obviously I got the plant and then I researched it. Similarly, you can't really have a queen Anthurium without a king Anthurium, I would say, maybe. Maybe I'm just upset. I don't know. I don't know. But this is the Anthurium Vici, also known as the King Anthurium. Again, nice. I do, I'm not falling in love with it. It's more like, you know, you can't have queen without a king. It needs to be a nice little set. That's kind of the reason that I'm going for it. I just have this inner desire to just complete the set and make a beautiful display out of, you know, the three of these plants that I've just mentioned. I don't know why. I just, oh lovely. So the next plant, I kind of see this as like a sister plant to uh, an anthurium that I already own and I just think it'd be a beautiful addition because they're similar but different and I really just, I actually want to experience the difference in these plants in person because it looks so good. But this is the anthurium wendlingeri, a wendl, anthurium wendlingeri. We'll go with that. This is a beautiful long hanging anthurium. It's kind of like belts that just hang, but the belts have the like a very, very slight ripple in them, but they're velvet. Velvet belts. Just imagine that. Just imagine that for a second. Not only that, but the blooms, and I hope this isn't just, you know, some of the images I've seen, and it's not actually like this, but the blooms on this have the most amazing, like, tumbling spiral shape. I'm looking at a picture of one now. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. It's all, oh, like, Again, I'm probably not going to find it because it was, you know, not easy to find the Anthurium vitari folium. That was hard to find. This one will be harder, I think. The last Anthurium on my Anthurium part of my wish list is, I guess I would like to own this one because it is different from a lot of other Anthurium that I still like. So it's kind of different, but it has all the hallmarks of the things that I like in Anthurium. And that is the Anthurium forgetii or forgetti or however you pronounce it. Um, it's nice. It has the same veining as kind of like an Anthurium crystallinum or crystallinum, but it's actually, the shape of it's so weird because it's not really heart shaped, it's just round at the top. So it's kind of like a teardrop shape. I find them quite unique. I do think these are quite pricey. I don't think I'm getting a hold of this either without spending some serious buck 
but I do like them. They are very different. It's an anthurium that I feel like is it's worth adding to a collection because it is different. It's not, you know, more of the same thing. On to a new category on my wish list. And there is only one plant in this wish list. And that is only because I think I haven't actually looked into the species beyond seeing this plant, you know, popping up on Instagram. So it's not like that I wouldn't find any other plants in this category. It's just that I haven't. So the only plant in the Aglaonema section is probably of no surprise and that is the Pictum tricolor. If you do not know what this plant is, it is wonderful. It is velvety and it is camouflage. But when I say camouflage, it looks like actual camouflage. I think these plants are incredibly sought after. I actually think that people pay a lot of money for these. I can't confirm that, but I think I think these are really, you know, up there with variegated monstera for some reason, but they are wonderful. I've heard mixed opinions about care for these. Some people are saying they're really easy. Some people are saying, oh my God, you know, put them in the wrong amount of light, they'll die. Water them, they'll die. Repot them, they'll die. So I don't know how easy or hard they are to care for. I've heard mixed things, you know, in the ether about this plant, so. Is this my last category? Oh no, we have two categories left, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please remain strapped in your seats. My next category is probably of no surprise either, and that is the Alocasia category. Now, there are four in here. That's not four, that's three. Four in here. One of them is from my original wish list, I think, and I think the other ones are new, and they've probably come from rare plant indexes because, oh, they're really dangerous. Quick little recap then of my original wish list, and the first plant on the Alocasia list is the Alocasia Dragon Scale. Now, I have found this plant on the internet. I have. I know a few places that sell it, but for me, the price is a little bit high for what it is. For the plant to be in this many shops, I therefore know it is available, and if it is available, it can be bought somewhere for less. Does that make any sense? I do have a Alocasia Silver Dragon as well, so you know, you can't really be a mother of dragons, if you will, with one dragon. So this one has to be added onto that. I actually think it's nicer than the silver dragon that I have. Although the silver dragon that I have is kind of in rehab a little bit at the moment, but I must add this. I cannot wait to add this, but as I say, I just need the price to drop because I do think it's a lot for what it is. Even though it is a stunning plant, do not get me wrong, I think it's a lot for what it is. The next plant on my list I also, you know, found out about through a rare plant index, and that is the Alocasia Fry Deck. This is quite a simplistic plant. There's not a lot to it, but I do think the simplicity of it is what I like. Yeah, the velvetiness, the contrast, the simplicity, just all really, really nice. So the next plant on my Alocasia list, I would have included this in a rare plant index if I knew about its existence, but I didn't. So this may be a new one for literally all of you watching. I don't know how many people know about this. I don't know if it's the right name of the plant because I've tried doing, you know, Google hits on this and there's just, there's just nothing. But this is the Alocasia. Aslanii? Aslani? I'm gonna call it Aslanii because why not? So some pictures of this look kind of pink and some pictures of this look more purpley, but I have never seen this alocasia before. I'm fully aware that someone probably will drop a comment in my comment section telling me that they're super common where they live, but I just haven't heard of these at all. This is completely new to me. Please let me know if you've heard of this before because I just, I don't see it being talked about. I don't see photographs of it. I don't see it. It looks cool. What is it? We don't know. We don't know. Last on my Alocasia list, we have another plant from the Rare Plant Index, and that is the Alocasia Nebula. I think it's Nebula. It could be Nebula Imperialis. I will look that up and I will put the right name here. So basically, disregard whatever I say. Editing Kaylee can sort it out. This seems to be another very fleshy Alocasia, similar to, you know, the Dragon Scale, the Silver Dragon, the Black Velvet. And that attracts me a lot because I feel like they're quite easy to care for against, you know, other Alocasia like Stingrays, Zebrinas. I just find them a bit easier. There is no harm in having an easier plant these days because, as I say, I have so many. So the easier, the better, really, to be honest. But I kind of want to add this to my collection because I do think my Alocasia collection is quite small. I know what I have. I have Stingray, Zebrina. Copria, Black Velvet, Silver Dragon, Calidora? That's not that small, is it really? Moving on to the last category I have on my you know, rare plant wish list, and that is a new category for me. I technically own one of this type of plant, but 
I just really want to own this other one because I only saw this about a week ago on the internet. I didn't know about its existence, but every image I see of this plant on Instagram, it really does live up to its name. And that is the Diffenbachia reflector. This is brilliant. Every single image I look at, it just looks wonderful. I hope it's not a trick. I <laughs> really hope it's not a trick. It seems to be quite velvety, which attracts me a lot. I love my velvet. It kind of has vibes of an Aglaonema pictum a little bit. Maybe because it's kind of camo-y, but not. I don't know. But it's just, it's a really striking plant. It's like, I don't have anything like this. It really is easy to see why people call it a reflector. That is just gorgeous. That concludes my rare plant wish list. Now, I know there are a lot of plants on it. And I would just like to say, again, I'm not expecting to get all of these. I think, I, you know, if there's 30 on that list, because I don't even know how long my wish list is, that's how ridiculous this is getting. But let's just say there's 30. I expect maybe to get a maximum of 10 of them. Like, I'm not expecting to go out and find a Spiritus Sancti. I'm not expecting to go out and find an Oblique. I do love looking after all of the plants I have very much. They, they, they kind of are a challenge and kind of aren't a challenge. I do have methods in place that makes it a lot easier. And I'm not talking about self-watering because I don't self-water. I water everything manually. Uh, on not even on a schedule just to give you an idea yeah I enjoy I enjoy all my plants I still have favorites um, I've been thinking about doing a video where I show you either my favorite plants or perhaps I show you like my philodendron collection or my monstera collection if you fancy watching that let me know I may or may not make that I'm not sure so thank you for sitting there and watching my ridiculously long wish list please put any comment you like about any of the plants I've mentioned whether you want one whether you have one and until next week thank you very much for watching I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Have a great weekend. Bye. <laughs>